Are we still good? Yes, we are good.
Good morning. Uh, welcome to church. Lovely to have you with us. I uh, hope you've had a great week. Uh, and good morning to those watching online. Uh, we're back in Hybrid Church. Uh, so welcome to those watching in church. Welcome to those watching at home, either live right now or a little bit later on catch up. Uh, why don't we pray as we begin our time together this morning. Loving God, thank you for this time that we get to share together this morning. Thank you for seeing us safely through this past week. Thank you for time that we get to uh, spend together in your presence. Uh, I pray that you would meet with us right now, wherever we are and however we are. Meet with us by your spirit, uh, be it glorified as we worship you together, and speak to us as we look to your words. In Jesus' name, Amen. Great stuff. Um, those who are watching online, can I invite you to click that little share button in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen and uh, uh, invite some friends to church with you. Uh, and also, we'd love to pray uh, together in a little while for one another. And so if there's anything that you would like us to pray for for you, do drop it in the comments. And as we pray together for our church family, we'd love to pray for you if there's anything that uh, you would like to share with us for prayer. But first, as we come together for a, a time of worship, if you were here last week uh, in church, you'll have noticed that it felt very strange uh, not to be able to sing. Uh, and it should feel strange, because we were made to sing. The Bible tells us to sing to the Lord uh, time and time again. Sing to the Lord, sing a new song uh, to the Lord. We're created to sing, we're designed to worship through song. But worship is so much more than our singing. And so this morning, if you're watching online, you'll be able to sing. If you're with us in church, we're, we're still not able to sing just yet, but can I invite us as we worship together, uh, even when we can't sing, to turn our, our thoughts, our minds, our focus on God. Uh, and so can I invite you, turn your eyes to the screen as we do that just now. Worship. We, we, we use that word a lot, usually when referring to singing, which is a form of worship, because the word worship means to really bow before someone. And so when we sing, we're coming in his presence and, and lifting him up, so that is a form of worship. But worship goes way beyond that. It goes to, what do I bow to? For some of us, we really do worship ourselves because we just surrender to our feelings, our desires, our pleasures, and we go, whatever my body wants, I'm gonna go after that. Others, we worship things like popularity, and, and we just bow down to people and what they want. Um, some of us, we just wanna fit into the culture, or we worship the country, or whatever else, but what God says is, look, I wanna be your first allegiance. So worship means you surrender to me, you say my ways are best and you gladly come under that type of leadership. And at the core of worship, that's what it's all about.
as we continue in a, uh, an attitude of worship, why don't we, uh, if you have a Bible, turn with me into the book of Psalms. Uh, and uh, you can do this if you're at home as well. Uh, turn into your Bibles and uh, why don't we just leave it open for a moment. And using the book of Psalms, why don't we call out some verses of uh, praise from the Psalms or some verses that speak about God's promise in the Psalms. On your seats as you came in were some uh, slips of paper. If you're in church, you're welcome to use those if you wish or to ignore the slips and pick different verses uh, from uh, Psalms in your Bible. But as we continue in prayer and in worship, why don't we uh, worship God by quoting uh, words, words of Psalms. Uh, as, as you wish, let's leave it open for a while. The Lord's promises are pure, like silver, refined in a furnace. Amen. Therefore, we know you will protect the oppressed. Mm. Psalm 12, 6 and 7. Amen. Psalm 9, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all the marvelous things you have done. Amen. I will be filled with joy because of you. I will sing praises to your name over the time. Amen. Psalm 16, verse 12. Lord, you are alone on my inheritance, my happy place. You go on all that is mine. Amen. I love Psalm 66, verse 20. Praise God, who did not ignore my prayer or withdraw his unfailing love from me. Mm. And so, Lord, thank you. We praise you and we worship you this morning because you are a, a good God. You are a, a loving God. You are a faithful God. You are a, uh, a loving God who, who uh, surrounds us and protects us and provides for us and heals us and comforts us and, and so much more. And as we've uh, either sung or hummed, you are awesome. Accept our praise. Accept our thanksgiving this morning. As we continue in prayer, uh, coming in from online, Nikki. Uh, Dennis asks that we pray for uh, her mum struggling with anxiety and she says pray also for our friend who lost her mum on Tuesday and pray also for my friend who lost her nephew in a senseless killing. Many of us will also know uh, Pat Roper uh, in our church family. Pat's husband Brian is currently in hospital uh, and she asks that we pray for him. He's been very unwell. He went into hospital uh, last week after falling down the stairs. He uh, hurt his head and his back and his ribs. Uh, it turns out that he's got a fractured spine but also when they took him into hospital they also discovered that he has cancer of the blood and of the spine. Uh, so he is in the Royal London Hospital uh, right now. He's started treatment uh, but Pat asks that we pray for him, for Brian, uh, and also let's pray for, for Pat and for their for their family. Each one of us will also have uh, our own concerns, our own needs, our own desires. As we pray, let's bring them before God as well. Father, we've just uh, affirmed and declared together that you are a, a powerful and an awesome and a faithful and a loving God. And so to you, our Lord, we bring before you those in our church family, those known to us who are in need of your touch. We bring before you our own needs anxieties, 
campaigns. We pray for all those who are unwell at this time. We think of Valerie, we think of uh, Brian, Pat's husband. We think of Nikki's mum and many others in our church family. Draw near to them, we pray, with your healing hands. We pray for those who uh, mourn and grieve. Comfort them and give them peace, we pray. We pray for those facing uncertainty. Uh, lead them, we pray. Provide for them. And whatever our own needs, our own prayers, hear us as we bring them before you. We'd also like to pray for our children. Yesterday was the last of our children's church online gatherings before we take a break over the summer. Our children have now finished in school uh, after what's been a, a tricky term for them. And we pray uh, for our children, for our young people and their families, that as we head into the summer holidays, that you would keep them safe, that you'd look after them, bless families. Uh, we pray for families who are struggling financially, provide for them. Uh, during what will be a difficult time. We pray that uh, our children will be able to have fun through the summer despite the restrictions that are in place. For families that are struggling to juggle, perhaps working from home and looking after children, uh, give them grace and strength, we pray. And we pray especially for our children, as they've not been able to gather as they normally would in children's church, that you would uh, continue to speak to them and teach them and build them up in you. Through this time we've prayed that this might be a time of growth for our church, and we pray that especially for our children. Have your way in them and through them we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Great stuff. On the subject of children, it looks like you've, uh, those who are here have already started, but uh, by the entrance as you came in are some slips like this. If you'd like to uh, take one and, and take some time to look through it, there's, uh, there's a coded message on the front and there's, some scrambled, there's a scrambled message on the back. If you'd like to take some time to work through it, you're very welcome. Do grab one if you haven't already and uh, we will see later on if anyone has managed to, to break the code and unscramble the messages uh, a little bit later in our, in our service. We'd like to take a moment now to come around our giving. Uh, giving is uh, an act of our worship uh, and as usual uh, through this time uh, the easiest way to give is online uh, through our website chingfordcong.org.uk forward slash give uh, or if you prefer to use the, uh, the offering envelopes if you're in church uh, then they can be left uh, either with cash or cheque or uh, card details they can be left in the box uh, by the door as you leave if you prefer. Uh, but thank you to those who uh, have continued to support us through these times, through your faithful giving. And, uh, but also, if you're, uh, if you're new today, there's nobody brand new in church, but if you're watching us online for the first time, we'd love to connect with you. Uh, you're only a stranger in our family once, and so if you're new with us, do take a moment to connect with us. The easiest way to do that is, again, on our website, chingfordcong.org.uk forward slash new. Uh, there's a very simple form to fill in there, and uh, I would love to, to get in touch with you this week, to touch base with you and welcome you into our church family. Uh, Great stuff. But as we uh, focus on our giving, let me pray uh, for us and for God's continued provision. Lord, thank you that through uncertain times, through challenging times, you have met our needs. You have uh, kept us and provided for us. And we pray uh, that as we give, our giving would, just as much as our singing, be an act of worship. That we would give out of a heart of love for you. Gratitude for all that you have done in us, through us and for us. 
We pray that our giving would be a, a declaration of our trust in you. Uh, would you accept the gifts that are given? Uh, thank you for continuing to provide for our church and we pray that you would uh, continue to do that. Uh, give us wisdom as we steward uh, all that is given. And through gifts which are given this morning, would you uh, bring about your purposes and build your kingdom in this place? In Jesus' name. Amen. Great stuff. If you have a Bible, turn with me into uh, Psalm 13. And let's... Uh, let's read together. If you're turning and you've got psalms, shout, well, hey. If you're still looking for psalms, shout, hang on, hang on, hang on. Everyone's there. Brilliant. Psalm 13. Uh, David writes, O lords, how long will you forget me? Forever. How long will you look the other way? How long must I struggle with anguish in my soul, with sorrow in my heart every day? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? Turn and answer me, O Lord my God. Restore the sparkle to my eyes, or I will die. Don't let my enemies gloat, saying, we have defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. Amen. Great stuff. Praise, praise God for that. If you've got a Bible, keep it open at Psalm 13, but tough days. We all have them, don't we? Some, some tough days are worse than others. Some of us uh, seem to have tough days more than others. Who's had a tough day recently? Anyone had a tough week? Tough month? <laughs> a tough year? We know the feeling. Some tough days are, are worse than others. A little bit like this one uh, that a builder reported on an accident form when it tried to be helpful. Moral of the story, don't try to be helpful. But here's what a builder wrote on an accident form. He says, when I got to the building, I found that a hurricane had knocked off some bricks around the top. So I rigged up a beam with a pulley at the top of the building and hoisted up a couple of barrels full of bricks. When I had fixed the damaged area, there were lots of bricks left over. Then I went to the bottom and began releasing the rope. Unfortunately, the barrel of bricks was much heavier than I was. And before I knew what was happening, the barrel started coming down, jerking me up. I decided to hang on, since I was too far off the ground by then to jump. And halfway up, I met the barrel of bricks coming down fast. I got a hard blow to my shoulder. I then continued to the top. I, I banged my head against the beam and uh, got my fingers pinched and jammed in the pulley. When the barrel hit the ground hard, it burst, allowing all the bricks to spill out. I was now heavier than the barrel, so I started going down at high speed. And halfway down, I met the barrel coming up and it hit my shins. When I hit the ground, I landed on the pile of spilled bricks and I got several cuts and bruises. At this point, I must have lost my presence of mind because I let go of my grip on the rope. The barrel came down fast. It hit me again on the head and put me in hospital and so respectfully, I request some sick leave. <laughs> Have you ever had a day like that? That one thing after another goes wrong. Do you ever go through times where you wonder how much more you can take? Or 
Maybe recently you've been on furlough and you don't know if you've got a job waiting for you in a few weeks' time. Maybe you've been juggling working at home and being a teacher at home, working and homeschooling, and, uh, or even if you're not working, if you've got children that are normally in school all the time and now they're at home all the time and I'm a parent, I, I know that feeling. And Maybe it's tough. Maybe your relationship or your marriage, you're spending a whole lot more time together now than you have done for years and, and the cracks are starting to show and you don't know how much more you can take. Whatever circumstances you face, maybe it just seems like there's one thing after another. And so this morning, as we carry on this uh, journey through our series, Behind the Mask, I wonder, behind your mask right now, whether it's your physical mask or the unseen mask that we all wear, I wonder if anyone this morning is despairing. I wonder if anyone is saying, I, I don't know how much more I can take. If that's you or if it's someone that you know, I'd like you to meet David today in Psalm 13. As you look at that psalm, Psalm 13, you'll notice that it splits neatly into three chunks. And the first third of the psalm, verses 1 and 2, is, is David's expression of despair. I don't know how much more I can take. And I wonder how many of us can identify with David when he says this. I don't know how much more I can take. Do you notice four times in two verses, David asks God, how long? How much more? Verse 1, how long? Will you forget me? How long will you look the other way? Verse 2, how long must I struggle with anguish in my soul? How long will my enemy have the upper hand? How much more? Do you see the intensity of emotion that David's feeling? We don't know what he's facing right now, but you can see the pain in his voice. How long is this going to go on for? And do you notice David's first reaction as he faces whatever it is he's facing is to assume that God is responsible. Do you notice that? Have you ever done that? When we go through tough times it's, it's God's fault. God's disappeared or God's made me do this. Or... And so David says, how long will you forget me for? How long will you look the other way? Psalm 10 does the same thing. Verse 1, O Lord, why do you stand so far away? Why do you hide when I'm in trouble? Uh, who of us hasn't asked God, where are you right now? We don't know what David was facing, what adversary he was facing, or what adversity he was facing at the time but it seemed unrelenting it seemed to him rightly or wrongly and I would suggest wrongly that he was suffering alone how many of us have ever felt that we're completely alone David felt forgotten by God When I say David felt forgotten by God, it's because we know, don't we, that God doesn't forget us. No matter what circumstances, circumstances might look like, no matter how it might feel at any given time, we might feel alone, but we know that we're not alone. Isaiah 49, uh, verse 14, Isaiah writes this. Jerusalem says, the Lord has deserted us, the Lord has forgotten us. Never. Can a mother forget her nursing child, says God? Can she feel no love for the child she has born? 
But even if that was possible, I would not forget you. See, I have written your name on the palms of my hands. No matter what it might seem like or feel like, Scripture promises us, God promises us, that he never forgets us. He never turns away from us. And so what we see in the rest of Psalm 13 is, within six short verses, David shifts from turmoil to tranquility. He shifts in six short verses from hurt to hope. And my prayer is that no matter what uh, despair you might be facing, or someone that you know might be facing, that that your story might be the same. And here's how David did it. The next two verses, verses 3 and 4, is is David's prayer. Look with me in verse verse 3 and 4. Turn and answer me. O Lord my God. You see, he assumes that God has looked away and scripture tells us that he hasn't, but that's David's assumption. David's prayer is is very short. It's very simple. David says to God, hear me and fix this. Have you ever prayed a, a prayer like that? Turn and answer me, hear me when I pray, fix this situation. You see, David is, is described in the Bible as a man after God's own heart. You would have thought that David had a, uh, a slightly more elaborate and expressive prayer. Faithful and loving God, I beseech you in your, in your faithfulness and your omniscience and your omnipotence, if it is your will to change this situation, but if it's not your will, I trust you regard. You would have thought that David, being a man after God's own heart, would have prayed a slightly more spiritual and theological prayer. But he doesn't. He says, God, hear me and fix this. In David's tough times and his low moments, his prayers weren't spiritual, they weren't theologically accurate, but it doesn't matter because his prayer was genuine and in his time of need he turned to God. Do you know what I find interesting about David's prayer? Look in the second half of verse 3. He says, restore the sparkle to my eyes. He doesn't pray, take this trouble away from me. Do you notice that? David doesn't pray for God to change or remove his situation. He prays for God to change him. He prays for God to restore him. He prays for God to give him peace and endurance, verse 4. Don't let my enemies gloat, saying we've defeated him. Don't let them rejoice at my downfall. In other words, keep me from falling. He doesn't pray for God to change or take his situation. He prays for God to change him. I love that. Friends, whatever your situation, if there is anything in life that perhaps is causing you to despair, to ask uh, how much longer... Can I handle this? Can I encourage you? Bring it to God today. But pastor, you're going to say, I I have prayed. I've been praying for my family for years and nothing has changed. I've trusted God all the way through lockdown, but time's coming out, running out, and if I don't have a job by next month, I'm in trouble. I have prayed. You're not alone. Look again in verse 1 and verse 2. How long? How much longer? How much longer? David had been praying for a long time and nothing was changing. Friends, keep praying. Keep praying. God will move in his way and in his time. And his way and his time are always perfect. Do you know what else I love? The same David who in Psalm 13 is praying, God, where are you? How much longer am I going to be able to deal with this? The same guy 
later in life, writes Psalm 37. And as he writes Psalm 37, he's looking back at his life and here's what he writes in Psalm 37 verse 25. He writes, once I was young and now I am old and yet I have never seen the godly abandoned or their children begging for bread. The same guy who at one point in his life was praying, God, I can't take this anymore. Where are you? Why have you abandoned me? At the end of his life says, actually, I've realised that God never abandoned me. Amen? I pray that you, at some stage, whatever you're facing right now, will be able to look back and say, just like David, that I was young and now I am old. I faced this, but now I'm here and God has never abandoned me. Then look in the last couple of verses of Psalm 13. David moves from despair through prayer into rejoicing. Look at verse 5 and 6. But I trust in your unfailing love. I will rejoice because you have rescued me. I will sing to the Lord because he is good to me. See, David, no matter what he's facing, doesn't give up. David holds on to the promise of God's faithfulness. And if you've got your own Bible, maybe underline or highlight or circle or uh, whatever you do on your phone, if you've got a, a phone Bible, that word but in verse 5. But I trust in your unfailing love. Do you know what that means? That but means it doesn't matter what comes before. It doesn't matter what is happening in life or around us, uh, no matter what is going on, but I trust in your unfailing love. And, and with that but, with that one little word, David turned from despair to victory. Can I encourage you today, friends, regardless of your circumstances, to choose to trust in God's unfailing love. And you know, when David has said in verse 5 and 6 that I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to sing. What has changed in his circumstances? Absolutely nothing. And yet David decides to worship God and praise God as if it has already changed. While David is waiting for change to come, he's going to worship God as if it has already come. You see, worship isn't something that we do when we feel like it, or when it's convenient, or when things are going well in life. Worship is a choice that we make to declare God's sovereignty. It is a choice that we make to, to focus on him and not ourselves, to affirm his worth. Uh, hence David says, I will sing because he is good to me. We don't know what David writes Psalm 13 in response to. We don't know what he's facing uh, in this psalm. Sometimes when David writes a psalm, we, we know what he writes it in, res in response to. If you've, if you've got a Bible, uh, look with me for some examples. Psalm 3. Tells us that David wrote this psalm in the time that he fled from his son Absalom. Psalm 18. David wrote, on the day the Lord rescued him from his enemies and from Saul. He says, I love you, you're my strength. Psalm 34. Regarding the time David pretended to be insane in front of Abimelech who sent him away. Psalm 51, we know that great psalm of repentance, Lord have mercy on me, uh, comes after David got caught with Bathsheba. Psalm 52, regarding the time Doeg said to Saul, David's gone to see Ahimelech. Uh, Psalm 54, a psalm of David regarding the time the Ziphites came and said to Saul, we know where David is hiding. Uh, and so David writes, come and rescue me. The list goes on. Time and time again, when David writes the psalms, we know why he's writing it. Psalm 13, we have no idea what he was facing. Here's what we do know. By the end of the psalm, there is no mention of the situation changing. 
And friends, I'm not promising you a, a turnaround in your situation just because you've come to church and prayed. There'll be preachers that tell you that. There'll be preachers that promise you if you, if you sow your seed, if you put your money in the offering, God will bring a turnaround in your situation. He might not. I'm not promising you a turnaround in your situation just because you've come to church, but I am promising you a faithful God. I am promising you a loving God, a dependable God, a God who has definitely not forgotten you or abandoned you, a God who knows your situation, a God who is able to turn around any situation, a God who is able to work through any situation, a God who is able to strengthen you for the road ahead, a God who is with you every step of the way. God might not have changed David's situation, but within six verses, through a very short prayer that simply said, God, hear me and fix this, God changed David. Can I invite you, while you wait and while you pray for God to change your situation, allow him to change you. Allow him to strengthen you. Allow him to encourage you. Allow him to give you his peace and his grace and whatever you need for the road that lays ahead of you. Why don't we pray? while our eyes are closed. Can I ask, if that is you, if, if your prayer this morning is, Lord, I, I need you right now, hear me and fix whatever I'm facing. Would you raise a hand? Those who are watching online, if that's you, just drop in the comments, God, hear me and fix me. And as we pray, we... I'd love to pray that, firstly, that God would, might change your situation, whatever it is, but more importantly, while we wait for the situation to change, that God might change us. Let's pray. Faithful God, an unchanging God. Thank you for David's words that we see today. Thank you for your presence in David's life and in David's troubles. And thank you that we can be sure, because you are faithful and because you never change, that you can be present with us and faithful to us in our troubles. And so we pray for each one of us, especially those whose hands were raised and those watching online who are particularly in need, that you would meet with them right now. Whatever troubles, whatever uncertainty, whatever uh, causes of despair they might be facing, whatever is, is causing them to say, Lord, how much more? How much longer, Father, meet with them, we pray. Lord, we pray for a change in situations. We pray for healing in broken relationships. We pray for provision where there, is, uh, where there are those looking for jobs. We, uh, whatever people's needs, we pray that you would work in those situations. But Father, in the meantime, while we wait for situations to change, would you be at work by your Spirit in each and every one of us and change us? Just like you changed David from God, where are you? To God, I'm going to praise you. Father, lift our eyes to focus on you. Give us faith to trust in you. Give us strength uh, to, to see the days ahead through. Give us ears to hear your voice speaking to us.
in the times that our prayers might not be particularly articulate or theological, God, hear us and fix us. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's turn our eyes to the screen again and uh, if you're at home, feel free to sing along. If you're with us in church, let's just reflect on these words and let these words be our prayer.
Amen. Isn't God great? You know, as we were uh, reflecting on those words just then, I had a chance just to catch up on what's uh, going on online and it's, it's so good to see uh, that those who are with us online aren't just uh, watching from a distance. There, there's, there's a whole load of ministry that's going on online right now with people encouraging one another and praying for one another. Uh, so thank you uh, and I'd love to encourage those who aren't able to be with us in person who do watch online that you are very much a part of this church family uh, and God's presence and power isn't restricted to this building and so whatever your needs as you pray God hears you wherever you are and uh, yeah thank you for encouraging one another uh, especially in the comments online and uh, some more prayer requests have come through that I'd love to share with us uh, we're asked to pray for Alison uh, many of you might not know Alison she was uh, on Christianity Explored with us and is now part of one of our small groups on a Tuesday evening Alison was in hospital this week for surgery and we're asked to pray for her as she uh, recovers Julie uh, many of us will know Julie, part of our church family, and uh, she asks uh, that we pray for her right now. She says, while I continue to experience problems in my mind. Uh, she says, I have bipolar and I've never told anyone in the church family how this affects me on top of my other impairments. Let's remember Julie in prayer. Uh, Sally asks that we pray for her. She has a, a job interview coming up on Tuesday and she's not sure if it's right or not. So she says, please pray that God will only open the door if it's him. Uh, so both in here and online, God is at work today. And uh, that's, that's so good to see. And we pray that God will continue to move uh, in us and through us in the days, days ahead. Uh, those children, have, have those that have had these sheets, have you, have you done them? Have you finished them? Yes, I is yes. Anyone else done, done these? Have you cracked the codes? Uh, has, anyone, has anyone cracked the code on, on, the, on the front page? Uh, have you done it, Zaya? Yeah, lovely stuff. Would you like to shout out so we can all hear you? Uh, what's, the, what's the secret message in the code? Lovely stuff. And that's from where? Psalm... Psalm 5 verse 13, I will trust in your unfailing love. Brilliant. And what about on the back? Has anyone unscrambled the message on the back? Have you, you done that? Okay. Anybody else before I go to, back to Zaya? Otherwise, Zaya can do it. Go on then, crack on. I will sing to the Lord. Brilliant. And that's Psalm 13 verse 6. Lovely stuff. Well done. Uh, brilliant stuff. Okay, just as we come towards the end, just a reminder uh, that straight after our time together uh, at 12 o'clock online, uh, for those who are watching online or those who are in church and want to rush home, uh, last week uh, some of our number uh, who are in church floored it home. I won't ask about the speed they drove to get there in order to get on Zoom at 12 o'clock. So uh, 12 o'clock on Zoom, as usual, we meet together. Uh, and uh, if you'd like to join us just to see each other's faces and share and catch up, uh, the meeting ID that you need is uh, on the screen if you're watching online. It's 970 570-511-5796. That would be great. Uh, next, uh, everything is as normal this week, so small groups are running and prayer meeting on Wednesday, etc, uh, etc. Et next Sunday, you should know the deal by now, but if you'd like to come to church next Sunday, we reopen and start it all over again tomorrow. And so for those who don't have internet access, uh, you get priority. Do call the church anytime between tomorrow morning and Thursday morning. And if there's no one here, just leave a message and say, I want to come to church on Sunday. Um, those with internet access, the online registrations will open again on Thursday morning morning for next Sunday. Um, and just a reminder of the plug that we gave last week for our food bank. Uh, Julia will be after uh, seven years of uh, running and uh, supporting and doing so much for the food bank, Julia will be stepping down very soon over the summer. And so if you uh, would like to help with the food bank. If you're in a position either to help with the running of the food bank or to uh, simply turn up and on a rotor basis help out on a Monday, uh, please would you uh, let me know and we can uh, have a chat about that. Uh, I think that's everything and so as we come towards the end of our time together uh, let's join in these words together let's uh, encourage each other let's bless each other uh, and so as the words come up on the screen uh, that we'll close with if I say the, uh, the normal words and invite us to join together in the words in bold as we pray together. For your goodness and generosity in giving us all we need, 
Help us to praise you, our gods. Uh, and the down arrow. In every circumstance of life, in good times and bad, help us to trust you, our gods. In love and faithfulness, with all that we have and all that we are, help us to serve you, our gods. And as we speak or write or listen to those nearby or far away, help us to share your love, our gods in our plans and our work, for ourselves and others. Help us to glorify you, our gods. In every thought and word and deed, by the power of your Holy Spirit, this week, help us to live for you, our gods. And let's say uh, to one another as we finish, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen. Fantastic. Have a lovely week and we'll see you very soon. God bless. I'll do the outro, Charlotte.